Welcome to our lecture online. Before we use Kramer's rule to solve some equations, some simultaneous linear equations, we're going to use the Gauss-Jordan elimination method and to show the three types of solutions we can come up with. The first would be a unique solution, and so here we have an example where I think we're going to get a unique solution, and here's the example. We'll see the other two solutions in later videos. A unique solution means that if we take the constants here or the coefficients of the variables and the constants at the end and we place those in what we call an augmented matrix and we change the format so that it looks like this so we have ones across the diagonals and zeros everywhere else and these are two constant numbers then we can say that x1 the first variable is equal to constant 1 and the second variable is equal to the constant 2 and therefore we have a unique solution let's try that and see if that works here so we take the coefficients of the two variables, we place those in a matrix, 3, 6, negative 2, and 4, and then we augment it with the constants on the other side of the equal sign, 4 and negative 8. Now we must reduce this to a form that looks like this. First, what we're going to do is we're going to take, hmm, let's see here. Well, since this is a multiple of that, we can get away with taking the second row, R2, and replacing it by negative 2 times the first row and adding it to the second row. Because negative 2 times 3 is a negative 6, add it to 6, that makes that into a 0. So without making that into 1 first, we can go ahead and simplify this first. It's kind of an orthodox way of doing it, but it should work. So let's try that. When we do that, we get the following. We get negative 6 plus 6, which is 0. The first row, of course, does not change. That's a 3, a negative 2, and a 4. And here we have negative 2 times a negative 2. That's 4 plus 4 is 8. Negative 2 times a 4 is negative 8, plus a negative 8 is a minus 16. Now we can go ahead and uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and turn this into a 1, and we can go ahead and turn this into a 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first row and change it to one third, oop, one third, the first row, and we're going to take the second row and change it to one eighth, the second row. When we do that, we get the following matrix. First row, we get a 1, a minus 2 thirds, and we get 4 thirds over here because we're dividing everything by 3 and on the second row we get a 0, a 1, and a minus 2. Now the only thing left to do is to get rid of this minus 2 thirds here. We can do that by doing the following. We can take the first row and replace it by the negative of that number which is a positive 2 thirds, multiply it times the row with the 1 in it, R2, and adding it to the first row. When we do that, we get the following matrix. Notice that the second row doesn't change. 0, 1, and negative 2. The first row had 1 there. And 2 thirds times 1 added to negative 2 thirds is a 0. And 2 thirds times negative 2, so a negative 2 times a positive 2 thirds is a negative 4 thirds. And we're going to add that to a positive 4 thirds, which means this gives us a 0. Notice we have a unique solution. We have ones across the diagonals, zeros everywhere else, and we have two constants here, which means that in this case, our variable x1 is equal to zero, and x2 is equal to a negative two. We can check to see that's correct by plugging those values in here and see what we get. Our first equation, three times zero, minus two times a negative two, is that indeed equal to a positive 4? And the answer is yes, so that checks. And the second equation, 6 times 0 plus 4 times a negative 2, is that indeed equal to a negative 8? And the answer is yes. So we do have a unique solution that seems to be correct. And that's how we do that. Now, on the next couple of videos, we'll show you some of the extraneous type of conditions you can get into and special cases, and we'll see that as we look at the next couple of videos.